Welcome everyone to the Northampton Bid Business Event 2021, Step Into the Future 21 to 26. I'm Ian Ferguson, Strategic and Development Director for Partnerships for Better Business, which manages, develops and supports bids across the UK. We've had the privilege of working with Northampton Bid for the last seven years, and I'm going to be your host this morning. Although the last 10 months has been challenging for us all, this morning's event aims to look forward to the future of Northampton at a time when the renewal ballot papers for the bid are being delivered to the businesses as we speak. First of all, I want to introduce you to the board of Northampton Bid, who come from a cross section of businesses in the town centre, who give their time voluntarily to represent your interests. This also includes representation from the Borough Council by the leader councillor Jonathan Nunn and co-chaired by Brendan Bruder of Abbey Ross and Andrea Smith of Franklin Solicitors. So this morning we have a great range of speakers to cover everything from a national government perspective to the local authorities' thoughts on the new unitary structure and plans for Northampton Town Centre. We will also be hearing from the Vice-Chancellor of the University about their plans for the future and how that relates to the town and Kerry Reynolds, Area Director of Metro Bank, as a relatively new business in the town and how it has been for them since they arrived two years ago. We will be rounding this up with some thought provoking analogies from the rugby pitch from Tony Davison, Commercial Director of the Saints, and finishing off with some final thoughts from Mark Mullen and Northampton Bid Manager and the formal launch of the bid film. I want to start off though by trying to put the last 10 months into context. Words such as unprecedented and accelerated are being used a lot in com commentary about the commercial world. But these probably sum up the key challenges and trends faced by businesses. And with this comes uncertainty about the future. However, many of the trends we are seeing had already started before COVID. Many commentators have said that trends have moved five years in the space of 10 months. But the biggest consequences of this for businesses are the severe pressure on cash flow, the need to restructure businesses, to deliver products and services in new ways, and even deliver new services. Some are in a situation where the rapid change has just put into question their whole ability to survive. This obviously has an impact on the nature of businesses attracted to and who can operate from a changing town centre. The growth in online retail was already having an impact in towns such as Northampton before COVID, with large units such as BHS and more recently Marks and Spencer vacating their properties. The acceleration of growth in online retail from 20% pre-COVID to 50% during COVID simply presents an even greater structural challenge for town centres. This in turn has presented a big challenge for landlords who are suffering rent deals simply to keep their units occupied. Pressures on housing had already been there before COVID, but a challenge for the immediate future will be to ensure that residents and businesses can coexist in harmony and benefit from each other rather than being at odds with each other. So there will be a need to manage and support the change for businesses and the town centres themselves and generate the confidence and funds needed to ensure that market forces play a role in securing a vibrant future rather than undermining it. Getting the balance between addressing the immediate financial pressures of landlords and getting the right investment for a long-term vibrant town centre will be about ensuring that people can work together for the same vision. The changes in the way we live and work are also presenting opportunities. Some home working will be here to stay, offices will be different in scale, the way they are fitted out and even where they are located. In COVID, it was the larger city centres with higher proportions of office space, which were worst hit, with reductions in footfall as people with long commutes stayed at home. This has improved the work-life balance, which many will not want to lose, and increased people's interest in their local towns rather than where their office was based. Already, large corporates are already starting to split up their teams into regional, smaller offices before COVID. But there are some serious reviews by corporate property managers considering even more radical reductions in single office occupancy. With this improved work-life balance comes an increased desire for open space in town centres and more places to spend leisure time. Before Covid, Bill Grimsey had already pleaded guilty to being one of the retail chief executives who had contributed to Clone Town Britain and was promoting the need for town centres to be more individual. 
the opportunity for town and city centres to embrace this has never been greater. So the prospects for town centres like Northampton with a rich heritage, a great cultural offer and a wealth of unique and distinctive businesses are potentially very promising. The vibrant town centre of the future will not be one which is led by retail and large format stores. It will be a place where all residents of the town itself and the surrounding area will find something to appeal to them all. It will be a hub for the whole community of the town and its surrounding area as the ability to live, work and play takes on new ways, new meanings and new values in society.